you found Paul Daddy's Blind Hog Barbecue. Today I've got a great video for you. We're gonna be making maple bourbon smoked ribs. Paw Daddy style. These things always turn out great. You're gonna love this recipe. So let's get right to work. We're gonna be starting with our spare ribs. And as you can see, this animal had a lot of body fat, so we're gonna be trimming that off. I'm gonna be squaring it up so it's got a better presentation. But we're not gonna be throwing any of this stuff away. We'll save it and it'll go in the freezer. When I make sausage, I'll pull it out. It'll go in the pot. It'll make great sausage, so nothing wasted here. You can throw this on the grill and cook some of it, or you can save it for sausage. It's up to you. Getting rid of this chine bone. Got a lot of meat flap right here. It's gonna be a lot thinner than the rest of your package. Your rub will not stick to the fat. The competition guys wouldn't dream of leaving it on there, but of course we're not doing competition, but that's a tag sticking up, so we're just gonna get rid of that. Okay, you could trim some of this off, but you also run the risk of gouging it. So I'm not gonna spend that much time doing that. Got another little tag right here. Okay, that just makes a better looking package. It's more St. Louis style. Okay, common method of dealing with this membrane is to use a knife that's got a very blunt on the point. Stick it under and get this thing started. Okay, a friend of mine showed me this. You can use your catfish skin and pliers. They will grip that skin if you have issues. Like I say, paper towel can work great, but sometimes you have problems with it. Now this does not go in the sausage pile. Okay, I'm preheating my grill to 275 degrees. Uh, I'm gonna be cooking for a shorter time. This is gonna be two hours on the grill, then we're gonna boil it for one hour, and then I'm gonna cook it as long as needed to set the uh, glaze. An alternative for you guys that don't wanna do 275, you can do 225 for the 321. Then you can go three hours, and pull it up, boil it, go two hours, boil, and then pull it off, glaze it, and cook it another hour. So it's up to you, whatever you're comfortable with. I'm gonna add a little vegetable oil for my binder. And uh, of course, one of the best practices is you wanna start with the bone side because the other side is your presentation side. That's gonna be the pretty side. So we want to put this on first and then flip it over and do the good side. Okay, and then now's the time to season it with the barbecue rub of your choice. Okay, I'm gonna be using Cosmos Cow Cover and Cosmos Dirty Bird, and both of them in the hot versions. Uh, because they're really not that hot, we'll start with a little cow cover, and then I'm gonna put some Dirty Bird on top of that. Dirty Bird hot. Okay, we don't want to rub it, of course. As you probably know, we just want to pat it in. And then we're going to flip it over, of course. Okay, and while we're doing all this, preparing our meat, we're preheating our smoker to 275 degrees. So you can do yours 275, or you can do it for 225, or the temperature of your choice. Okay, so we're going to do our presentation side, pat it in, and it doesn't hurt to get your edges. Okay, we're gonna give it a little time to soak up and uh, be absorbed into the meat for just a little while, and then we'll get it on the smoker. Okay guys, as you can see, I'm gonna be cooking in a char griller acorn Kamado, and I've got a Fireboard 2 Pro the temperature controller on there. It uses a fan that's at the bottom of the unit, and that comes on and off as needed and get your temperature in the range that you want it. One pound of Franklin barbecue charcoal briquettes, and I'm supplementing that with one pound of DNB lump charcoal. So the lump gives me the uh, temperature that I need without any question, and the uh, briquettes are more for consistency. So I like mixing it up and combining the two, and usually have great results. Okay, we're gonna put these ribs on here, and we're gonna make them compact. I'm pushing them together. You don't want them strung out. You want them compact. 
that lets them maintain some juiciness. So, okay, so I started a two hour timer. You can see they're looking quite good. That's all there is to it. One hour mark, flip them. Okay, you can hear the buzzer. So the alarm is time to take these ribs off and we're gonna foil them. Got a lot of nice pullback. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is make our foiling solution and this makes enough what I'm giving you for one rack of ribs. So we're gonna put in a quarter cup of bourbon. I'm using Jim Beam Black Label. And then we're gonna put in a quarter cup of maple syrup. And I get my maple syrup in a can. We're using Parker's. Okay, I've got a quarter cup of parquet. You can use butter or you can use parquet. Quarter cup of sugar. You can use brown sugar, but I'm using turbinado. Turbinado is sugar in the raw. It's just easier to work with, more convenient than brown sugar. And they have similar burn points. So we're gonna mix this up. And I've got two sheets of foil, and that's because I don't trust one. You can get by with one if you've got good heavy duty foil and you trust it. So let's just put some butter down and then we're just gonna give it a sprinkle of our turbinado sugar. And then I'm gonna add our rack of ribs and we're going meat side down. Okay, and I'm gonna give it another little sprinkle of butter. This is optional, but, and another little sprinkle of sugar. Okay. Now we want to form a boat. And you've got good pullback on those bones and that's where the problem comes in. You punch a hole in your boat and you're gonna have some liquid. So to avoid that, I'm using two sheets. Give this a good stir and then pour it over. Now we want to seal it up. Now, I'm gonna set mine in the pan and put it back on the grill. The pan is optional. This is all you need technically, but for that extra layer of protection, I'm gonna use the pan. Okay, now we're making our glaze. I'm gonna start with one quarter cup of the bourbon. And then we're gonna add one quarter cup, one quarter cup maple syrup, one tablespoon brown sugar one teaspoon of barbecue rub. I'm gonna add one cap full of apple cider vinegar, and one squirt, squirt, one squirt of ketchup. Okay, we got the heat on high. We're gonna mix this up and bring it to a boil, and then we'll turn it down to a simmer. Okay, once it boils, we want to turn that heat down to low. We want it to thicken up. Okay, when you've got your glaze reduced to a syrupy consistency without burning it, and that's still got that good red color, we'll turn your heat off and uh, wait on the clock so we can get in there and get it on the ribs. Let me shut that off. And the first thing I want to do is give it a temperature check, see where we are, around 208, which is absolutely perfect. Let them drain for a second and get them on that grill. Now we're gonna take our glaze that we've already made. And if your glaze gets too thick on you, you can always add just a little bit more bourbon and that'll get it where you want it. So my glaze is good and thick. Do the bone side first. Now we wanna glaze our meat side and they are looking beautiful. Okay, if you're cooking at 225, you may wanna go another hour. But uh, since we did 275, all we're interested in is letting our glaze set up. So I'm gonna shut the lid for a little bit and uh, then we'll get right back to it and check it in just a few minutes. Typically, if you're cooking at 225, your time's gonna be anywhere from 30 minutes to a full hour. I was cooking at 275, mine went about 20 minutes. And then you can either wrap it in foil or do like I've got a little pan and foil line that we're gonna wrap it up and it's gonna go in the cooler to rest for an hour. I've got a furniture moving blanket. This blanket came from Harbor Freight. They're very low cost, very inexpensive. It's dedicated for this use. Uh, covering up my barbecue and letting it rest. We've got the one hour timer going, and when an hour's up, we'll cut some ribs. 
Okay, they've been resting for an hour. You don't have to rest them an hour. You can go 15, 20 minutes, but you need to give them a rest nonetheless. Beautiful rack of ribs, got great color. Okay, I'm gonna flip them over and start cutting. Let's see how we did. Oh, they're juicy, great flavor, outstanding. Very tender, but still hanging on the bone. These ribs taste great. I highly recommend them. Appreciate you watching. I hope you decide to hit that like button. Please subscribe. I hope to see you next time at Paul Eddie's Flying Hog Barbecue.